From its initial creation in 7th century BC, the country of South Korea has evolved physically and culturally to become one of the wealthiest countries in all of Asia. Along with incredible technological advancements, universal healthcare, and freedom of religion, South Korea boasts one of Asia's highest standards of living. Additionally, Korean pop culture, known as Hallyu, has spread out beyond the country. But although Korea's global influence is clearly visible in the present, the nation was not built in one day. Less than a century ago, Korea was a country plagued with struggle and conflict. Following the Russo-Japanese War and then Japanese annexation of Korea, the Korean people took a stand through the March 1st movement in order to protest the violation of their rights and for the independence of their country. Although the March 1st movement is perceived as a failure by historians in achieving Korean liberation from Japan, it was a significant cause of the start of Korea's independence movement and unification of the Korean people. Also, it serves as an example of peaceful resistance for other groups around the world. Prior to the Japanese occupation, the Japanese-Korean relationship had been beneficial to both sides. However, it was not until the Tongok Peasant Revolution that Japan's intentions of conquering came into prominence and seemed to be more plausible. The frightened government asked the Qing Dynasty of China for help to quell the peasants' rebellions, and they responded by sending 2,700 soldiers to Korea. Angered that the Koreans allegedly violated the promise made during the Convention of Tietzin, Japan started the Sino-Japanese War. Ultimately, Japan defeated China before assuming dominance in Korea, causing anxiety for the rebels. Then, in 1895, tension increased between Japan and Korea when a group of Japanese men murdered Empress Myeongsong, the last empress of Korea, due to her resistance towards Japanese influence. This was a complete insult to the Koreans, a hideous event, crudely conceived and brutally executed. Through these series of events, the Korean people grew exhausted of the mistreatment they faced as a nation living under the oppression of Japan. It was the Russo-Japanese War that ultimately landed Korea under Japanese authority. After years of disputing over who would take control of Korea, Russia and Japan finally settled their dispute with the signing of the Treaty of Portsmouth in 1905. This formally ended the Russo-Japanese War, as Russia also gave Japan control of Korea. The Japanese occupation and eventual annexation of Korea posed challenges to the national identity of the Korean people. Assimilation policies, such as the discarding of traditional Korean names, helped with making Japan and Korea into one body. Additionally, the mysterious death of the Korean King Gojong spurred rumors that he had been poisoned by the Japanese. This pushed the Korean people past their tipping point, kick-starting the March 1st movement. At 2 p.m. March 1st, 1919, the 33 core activists of the March 1st movement, or Samuel movement, began their fight at Tapgol Park in downtown Seoul. Notable activists include Kim Gu, Seung Man Lee and Che Nam Son, whom of which organized the movement and drafted the Korean Declaration of Independence. Massive crowds began to grow rapidly as readings of the declaration was heard throughout the park and neighboring towns. <laughs> Long live an independent Korea became the cry for all. Peasants, farmers, students, pastors, men and women joined the protests. The bonds formed by patriotism spurred the Korean people to unify, to fight against the Japanese for independence. Although this was executed as a peaceful protest, the Koreans were treated with immense hostility by the Japanese officials. In order to suppress these uprisings, unsystematic slashings and shootings swept throughout the nation. In one well-attested incident, villagers were herded into a local church which was promptly set on fire. 
the official Japanese count of casualties included 550 killed, 1,400 injured, and 12,500 arrested, but the Korean estimates were much higher. Over 7,500 killed, about 15,000 injured, and 46,000 arrested. A lot of things that happen in defeat are actually powerful generators of huge reaction that makes things stronger. Many became martyrs for their country for their right as Koreans. Notably, Yu Guan Sun, a 17-year-old Christian freedom fighter, helped to organize a peaceful protest against the Japanese occupation. Deeply influenced by her faith, Yu Guan Sun was determined to free her country. Carrying the voices and leading the masses to freedom was one young, fearless soul that became the face of the independence movement. Several were not given a fair trial or any trial at all and were tortured to death or executed without reason. A multitude of these tortures and executions took place at the infamous Sovemun prison in Seoul. The prison was used by the Japanese to hold Korean independence activists. Originally, it was made to accommodate up to 500 people. However, up to 3,500 prisoners were packed inside during the height of the anti-Japanese protests in 1919. Over 60,000 freedom fighters passed through the entrance gate and at least 400 died or were killed inside, including Yu Guan Sun, who was tortured to death in 1920. <laughs> 내 나라 내 땅에서 만세를 부르는 것이 왜 죄냐? 무차별 총질을 해대요. 내 아버지 어머니를 비롯해 수많은 사람의 목숨을 저리도 무참히 빼앗을 수 있느냐? 죄가 있다면 불법으로 남의 나라를 점령한 너희에게 있다. 나는 죄인이 아니오. 우리나라가 독립하는 그 순간까지 죽는 한이 있어도 만세를 부를 것이오. 일제는 반드시 망할 것이고 너희 외놈들 전벌 받을 것이야. Tragically, the United States did not support Korea at this time. In January 1919, President Woodrow Wilson issued his 14 points, which stated a free, open-minded, and absolutely impartial adjustment of all colonial claims regarding U.S. global relations. However, the reality was that Wilson wasn't interested in challenging Japan. Despite the neglection from the U.S. government, foreign correspondent Albert Widler Taylor successfully brought the news of Korea's revolution to the rest of the world. His journalism under the United Press International broke barriers of ignorance among Americans. Nevertheless, the most important outcome of the March 1st movement was a provisional government of the Republic of Korea on April 13, 1919 in Shanghai, China. For 35 years, the government resisted the Japanese colonial rule, coordinating the armed resistance against the Japanese Imperial Army. In present day, the people of Korea still recognize it as the first government of the country. In regards to achieving independence, the March 1st movement was deemed a failure. The protests led to a surge of forceful authority and more explicit, unjust treatment of Koreans. However, outside the borders of Korea, the winds of change were blowing. Nonviolent rebellions sprung up all over the world, inspiring upheavals such as Gandhi's Sandhyagraha against British imperialism, as well as the May 4th movement, a peaceful student uprising against the Chinese government. And even within Korea, the March 1st movement jump-started the locomotive that would become the Korean independence movement. From this one event, the Korean sense of nationalism grew to expansive proportions and ignited the nation. The failure would be if the Koreans were completely crushed and they never spoke up again, but they didn't. In the June 10th movement in 1926, thousands of students participated in anti-Japanese protests. Then, in 1929, Students stood tall and remained silent in refusal to sing the Japanese national anthem during the Kwangju Student Independence Movement. So despite its initial shortcomings, the March 1st movement was more than just a short-term defeat, but in fact a long-term success with the clear goal of autonomy. 
the Korean people took a stand to become unified once more.